Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back. Back with another PlayStation 4 Hidden Gems video. I've already done three of these videos in the past covering a bunch of great PlayStation 4 games. So if you don't see what you're looking for in this video, well, you might wanna check out those. I'll put a link down in the video description below. But for this video, I chose eight games that pretty much flew under the radar a little bit. However, here's the thing. A few of these games did come out on other systems. However, the reason why I'm including them in this video is because, well, for the most part, they got a physical release on the PlayStation 4. So if you're a physical game collector like me, often the PlayStation 4 version is the one you wanna seek out. The other thing I wanna mention is that all of these games play on the PlayStation 5. As a matter of fact, all of the footage that you'll see in this video is me capturing that footage, running these games on a PlayStation 5. So let's go ahead and check out the games. The first game I wanna mention is called Gravity Rush 2. This is a sequel to a game that originally came out on the PlayStation Vita handheld. Now that was a beloved game on that system with a really unique premise. You play as a girl that can control gravity on this grand adventure in this fantasy world. I guess I would describe this game as one part platforming and adventure game, and then one part collect-a-thon, and then maybe one part superhero game. But it's unlike any other superhero game that you've probably ever played. The one thing going into this game is that you need to understand that the controls definitely take some getting used to. You're not necessarily controlling where the character flies to, instead you're controlling where she falls to. Again, you're controlling her personal gravity. It's a very subtle thing, but one that can kind of take a bit of time to wrap your head around. Thankfully, the lock-on system works pretty well. It'll auto-target the nearest enemy or an object that you can interact with. Still, in the heat of battle, especially if there is a time limit, it can be pretty frustrating trying to deal with the, the, the weird kind of controls and also the camera. If you haven't played the original game, you might be wondering why I'm recommending the second game in the series, but really, you don't have to have played the original to enjoy this one. Yes, the original was remastered also for the PlayStation 4, but this game acts both as a sequel and a prequel in that it delves into the origin story of the character, and so you're not really missing much. It's also a long game at over 20 hours for the single player story, and you can easily double that if you take on all the side missions and you try to find every collectible. And I have to say, going back to capture this footage, Jumping off a building and then taking control of the gravity never gets old. This is a really fun and unique game, and yes, a total PlayStation 4 hidden gem. Next up is a game called Steel Rats, and this is an example of a game that also came out on the Xbox One, the Switch, and the PC, but it's on the PlayStation 4 where they released a physical version. Well, at least outside of North America, so you will need to get an import copy of this like you see here. What the Think of this as a post-apocalyptic motorcycle trials game, but you've also got guns, weapons, and upgrades. And this is quite an unusual game. I mean, it's not gonna be for everybody, but I love games that try to do something kind of different, and this one is pretty fun, and it's definitely different. Now, as you can see here, it's a mix of a driving game and also a 2D kind of platforming game. And because of that, the controls take a little bit of getting used to. I mean, it throws a lot of options at you fairly quickly, almost, I would say, too quickly for some people. For instance, you have buttons that will do boost, you have buttons for a quick little turnaround, you also have buttons for attack, there's another button for a jump, there's a surprising amount of stuff happening in this game. And you'll notice that I'd like to mention how long it takes to beat a game because, 
Well, I mean, these days, pretty much everybody is short on time to play games and often shorter games can actually be a little bit more appealing. So this game here, Steel Rats, can be completed in about five or six hours, but there's enough collectibles and hidden things to find throughout the game that you can easily double that time. Considering that this game typically goes for about $10 or less if you get it digitally, or maybe about $25 for the physical version, that might be a good deal for you. But really I wanted to mention this because not a lot of people know about this game and I actually kind of dig it, especially, again, when you get the controls down, it's really fun. Now, is it a perfect game? No. It definitely feels like an indie game that could probably use a little bit more polish, but it's way better than you might expect. And again, definitely a hidden gem. Next up is a game called Gundam Breaker 3. So this is a really cool Japanese mech brawler with some great features. So the premise of this game is that you are a real world kid living in Japan that joins a team of Gundam collectors who then battle it out in this virtual arena with these little plastic mech toys. And so at its heart, this is a brawler slash beat em up, but it's got a ton of RPG elements to it. You can upgrade and configure your mech pretty much any way you want to. We're talking, you can put a new head on there, arms, legs, shields, weapons, both melee and long range. You can change the color, the skins, the stances, the actions that they do. It's almost never ending. And then what you do next is take these little plastic mech toys into battle against your foes and try to kick their ass. Now I know what you're thinking watching this gameplay footage here is that it looks really chaotic and yeah, it is, but there's a lot going on here. You have short and long range attacks. You've got heavy and light attacks, special attacks that have cooldown timers. Plus you've got fellow computer teammate members that you can issue commands to. And then you also have healing abilities and just a ton more. Now you can on the easiest difficulty setting kind of just button mash your way through these battles but you'd really be missing the point. There is a lot of real-time strategy happening here and you need to be on your toes. This was released around the time that the Vita version came out. That's actually the version that I played first. And this has a really cool feature here where you can do cross saves. So you can upload your saves to the cloud and then download them and continue playing on your PlayStation Vita. Now I just tested this again and it still works, but I'm not entirely sure how long this is going to work because it's Sony and they could probably just you know, abandon that feature at any moment, but when it works, it's pretty cool. I'll admit, I'm usually pretty skeptical of games that are this chaotic, but man, I really grew to love this game. Now, it's important to know there are two versions of this game on the PlayStation 4. There is the Break Edition, which includes all the DLC. You might wanna snag that one if you run into it, also be aware that there is a sequel called New Gundam Breaker that fans do not like. Now, I haven't played it myself, but just be aware, it's kind of confusing. You kind of have to pay attention to the title here because you don't want to get that version. You want to either get Gundam Breaker 3 or the Break Edition. Next up is Ketsui Destiny. I originally talked about this cave shoot 'em up back in a pickups video a while ago. And in the comments, I actually called it Ketsui death to knee because that's how it's spelled. <laughs> and I was corrected in the comments. People are like, no, it's actually meant to be kind of a Japanese joke. You're supposed to do it with a lisp and it's supposed to be very tongue in cheek. So just be aware, I guess it's called Ketsui destiny. Either way, this is a banger of an arcade shoot 'em up. Now, if you've never played one of these cave shoot 'em ups just know that there is a lot going on here, way more than just trying to mow down as many enemies as you can. First up, this game has five stages as well as mid-level bosses and then a big boss at the end of each level. Plus, you have two ships to choose from, each with their own shot patterns and speed of movement that you can kind of tailor it to your specific play style. 
But the reason why I want to talk about it in this video is because, well, this is a great release of the game because it includes several different modes to suit pretty much any experience and skill level. With people who have played these for years, or maybe you're just new to these kind of bullet hell style shooters. Super easy mode is great for beginners. It'll slow down the action a bit and help you kind of learn the levels and the bosses. Arcade mode is for the normal experience where the difficulty is raised, but still very fair. Then there's the Katsui Destiny Arrange mode, which introduces new scoring and also this little destroy bar at the bottom. In this mode, depending on how leveled up you are and how well you're doing in the game, well, things like your shields and auto bombing will happen if you're hit. There's also a custom mode that allows you to tweak the game to exactly how you want to play it. What's cool about these releases are the side panels that are giving you real-time information about the game that you're currently playing. On the left is information about scoring that is happening real-time, so like what multipliers are being used, maybe how close you are to the enemies dropping these multipliers, damage effects, and a ton more. And then on the right you see a map of the entire level and where you're at during your play. I can see gamers trying to maximize their scoring by maybe recording your gameplay and then you could go back and analyze and see exactly what you need to do to improve kind of moment by moment. Also, this makes it pretty interesting for someone who is watching you play, like say sitting on the couch next to you or maybe on a live stream where they could kind of get more information about what's happening in this crazy shoot 'em up. As you can tell, this is an excellent release for the PlayStation 4, and the fact that we got it in physical, well, that's just one more reason why you might want to pick it up. Next up is an arcade racing game I'm very excited to talk about, that is Hot Shot Racing. This comes to us from Sumo Digital. They are an excellent developer who made all those really great modern OutRun games, you know, like 2006, Coast to Coast, all of those. They're the same developer that made this. You'll immediately notice that the graphic style here is very retro inspired. It's got like a low polygon style to it. I really dig it. It's funny watching this because, you know, all it really needs is to have like the Tesla Cybertruck as an unlockable. That'd be pretty funny. Drifting for Boost is the name of the game here, and it feels really good to drift in this game. It feels almost a little bit more analog than, say, OutRun. And I mean, that's a high praise because I think the OutRun games do it extremely well. But here it's a little even more controllable. You feel like you just have a little bit more control over your drift in this game. You can really finesse it. And you see those four bars down in the right hand corner. So that's how many times you can boost based on how much you drift. So you want to build that up as much as possible. Use it at very strategic times to you know, launch ahead of the other cars. And again, it all feels very good because that developer has so much experience making great arcade games. Now, this game also came out on other systems, including the PC, Xbox, and Switch. But again, it's the PS4 physical version that I typically see all the time, and it's not very expensive. So I wanted to include it here. I do see the physical Switch version occasionally, although not as often and not as cheap. So if physical collecting is important to you and you love great arcade racing games, you might want to snag the awesome PlayStation version now. With all due respect, could you not? The next game I want to talk about is a VR game, but before you tune that out, because maybe you don't own a VR headset just yet, you might want to wait a second here and let me describe this really cool game to you. This is a game called Paper Beast, and basically this is kind of like an alien planet adventure and puzzle game. And when I say that the game puts you on an alien planet, I really mean it. There is going to be very little here that you're going to initially be relating to, it's really weird right off the bat. The first thing you notice are these organic creatures that seem to be made entirely out of paper or ribbons, yet they're alive, they're thinking, and they're trying to guide you somewhere. And let me just tell you, a flat 2D YouTube video does not do this game justice. This is an incredible game to just stand in this space and explore this world. When I when I first got into this, I just stood there and was just in awe. 
Now, originally this game came out on the PlayStation 4 and was for the original VR headset, and it plays great there. But the good news is, if you happen to have a PlayStation 5 and you happen to have the new PlayStation VR 2 headset, this game is enhanced for that as well. So actually the footage here that you're seeing is the PSVR 2 you know, footage. But again, just be aware that the game looks stunning on both. The puzzles are very physics based, often dealing with utilizing creatures to help you out, maybe trying to divert liquid from one area to another or build up a platform so you can reach a new area or just trying to solve kind of obtuse, bizarre puzzles to advance the story. And that's the thing about this game is that it feels very alien. It doesn't hold your hand. It doesn't tell you what you need to do. You're just meant to kind of explore, poke around and try stuff. And like many VR games, this one doesn't overstay its welcome either. You can beat this game in about two to three hours if you know what you're doing. Maybe a little bit longer if you're like me and you get stuck and you need to kind of experiment a little bit. When people talk about how VR can give you an experience that you just can't get in a traditional 2D game, this is what they're referring to. This is such a strange, beautiful, even sometimes kind of emotional game, and I highly recommend it. Next up is a 2019 remastered version of Medieval. Now I know some of you are going, wait, this is a remake of a game that was released back on the PlayStation 1. And while I think that game found its audience, I also think back on the PS1, it was a little bit of a hidden gem, at least all these years later, not many people talk about it. And so many of us were very surprised when Sony brought it back all these years later for the PlayStation 4. This is a very old school feeling game. It's basically a hack and slash game with a lot of adventure elements. You play as a resurrected warrior who died in battle a hundred years ago, probably a little bit too soon, but you're brought back to fight this evil wizard that's taken over the land. There's a variety of weapons here, both up close and personal, as well as ranged attack weapons that you can quickly switch between on the fly. You have a shield you'll need to use to block attacks, but you also use that to solve some of the puzzles. And here's the thing, this is based on a PlayStation 1 game, and so it does have a camera that feels kind of old school. Sometimes you can move it around freely, but then other times you'll be locked into a certain direction or looking a certain way. It can be kind of weird and frustrating to modern gamers, so just be aware going into it, that's what you're dealing with. However, I think the updated graphics look pretty good. I mean, you see it running here, it's, it's a nice looking game. And there's a fun sense of humor here too, which I really appreciate. I mean, it's a game I think many of us were very happy to see that got its remade, remastered look to it. So it's, it's not gonna be for everybody, but I do think it's a total hidden gem, especially on the PlayStation 4. Next up is The Order 1886. So this is a very early PlayStation 4 exclusive that, you know, at the time of release did have a lot of excitement around it, especially around its amazing graphics. But ultimately it didn't sell very well and it's a real shame. <laughs> At the time, this game was considered way too short for a full price AAA release. It's single player only, and the story can be completed in about six to seven hours, and there's no real replayability. And so I get it, you know, you pay full price for a game and it only lasts for, you know, six or seven hours. Yeah, you might be kind of disappointed. However, now that the game is older, you can easily find this for like five or 10 bucks. So that's the reason why I think now it's absolutely worth your time at that price. As you can see by this footage, this is a third person cover based shooter that takes place in the year 1886 in London. And you play an officer of Knights of the Round Table and basically you're trying to control these rebels that are taking over London and causing all sorts of problems. But what's crazy about this game is that they're working with werewolves and vampires. And you guys are looking at the footage here, and as you can see, it's a very cool looking steampunk adventure game. 
that has some truly excellent graphics. There's just so much detail around every corner here. The downside with this game, of course, is that it's just short and very linear. And unfortunately there are, you know, there's a lot of quick time events, which was kind of common at the time. However, the story and the graphics and also the shooting mechanics, I think more than make up for those complaints. But like I said, you know, at about $10 for a complete copy today, why not give this game a chance? It's pretty cool. So there you have it guys. That is another PlayStation 4 hidden gems video. Now there were over 3000 games released on the PlayStation 4. So we've only begun to scratch the surface here. So I would love to know down in the comments, what games you think are hidden gems on the PlayStation 4, and maybe I should cover them in a future video. Please let me know. And as always, guys, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.